A few more degrees. This is the temperature that scientists project for 2100. A few more degrees does not seem like much, but it could make the difference between the world we know today and a world totally transformed by the effects of climate change. Climate change mainly refers to a crucial data, temperatures. These are the average temperatures on Earth reconstructed or measured since 20,000 years. In this graph, data since 1850 are real thermometer measurements. Data from before this, an era so-called pre-industrial period, is compiled from a large number of scientific studies. And this is where you're probably wondering, how do they know what the temperature was so far back in the past? First, let's focus on the two main dating methods. The first is the study of living or fossilized tree rings, dendrology. Simply put, the more rings a tree has, the older it is. With this method, scientists can already trace back up to 7,000 years in the past. The second method is radiometric dating, or radioactive dating. This complex word refers to radiation produced by certain isotopes, which are different forms of certain atoms. Over time, these isotopes, like carbon-14, degrade into normal atoms and become non-radioactive. We also know the concentration of some of these isotopes remains stable in the atmosphere, since they are constantly produced naturally. By measuring the concentration of these isotopes in the sample, it is possible to date it up to several billion years in the past. To know the temperatures, different isotopes are used. They have the property of not degrading over time, but their concentration changes according to the temperatures. The most used example is oxygen-18. By measuring the concentration of these isotopes in gas bubbles trapped in glaciers, in sediments, or in fossils, scientists are able to reconstruct the temperature of several geological or ice layers and date their epoch. Before trying to understand what causes temperatures to rise, let's first look at what causes natural climate changes. It all starts with the sun, which is our planet's main source of energy. Earth revolves around the sun and completes its orbit in one year. But its orbit is not constant. Between the nearest and the farthest point, the variation in distance is measured in millions of kilometers. The closer the Earth is to the Sun, the higher Earth's average temperatures are. But this does not explain what we see, as the cycle takes about 400,000 years, and currently the Earth is still far from the Sun. The radiation, or brightness of the Sun itself, fluctuates following cycles which last between 11 years and millennia. The observation of sunspots allows to trace the history of these cycles. The more spots the Sun has, the more it radiates. But here again, the intensity of solar radiation does not explain the current warming either, since the sun seems to be headed towards a decrease in its intensity. The Earth also turns on itself in a day, but its axis of rotation is tilted. It fluctuates over about 10,000 years, between 22 degrees and about 24 degrees, which is enough to change local sunshine and temperatures. Once more, the variation of Earth rotation axis does not explain the warming observed since the pre-industrial period. The rest of natural climate change known causes can all be considered internal to the Earth and are essentially linked to what we call greenhouse gases. Water steam is the most powerful greenhouse gas. It is the greenhouse gas that warms our planet just enough for it to be habitable. But Earth's water cycle, which produces steam, is only influenced by heat. To reduce the greenhouse effect caused by water, the only lever is on temperature, and therefore on other greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is the gas everyone talks about, and for good reason. It is the gas that has increased the most in the atmosphere since the pre-industrial era. It is the byproduct of many human activities, but also it is the best Earth's re-emitted heat absorbent after water steam. Methane, yes, the cooking gas, is also a greenhouse gas. It has a warming effect 25 to 56 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. Even if it is more dangerous, the concentration of methane is nevertheless lower than CO2 for the moment. And above all, it decomposes on its own after about 12 years. 
Other man-made gases also cause the greenhouse effect. Some are even thousands of times more powerful than CO2, but their concentration in the atmosphere is limited and their sources are controllable. For example, the CFCs, which cause the hole in the ozone layer, are banned since 1995. In nature, some of the greenhouse gases can be produced naturally by fauna and flora imbalances. But their main natural source remains volcano eruptions. None of these climate change natural causes can explain the rise in temperatures we are seeing since pre-industrial era. And although several volcanoes have erupted since, their emissions into the atmosphere are negligible on a planetary scale. Only one factor can explain it, an artificial one, our greenhouse gas emissions. Since 1957, the Air Quality Observatory atop Mauna Loa in Hawaii, aided by several orbiting satellites, has been measuring CO2 concentrations in the air. This graph, compiled by NASA, shows the magnitude of this increase compared to the past 800,000 years. The current concentration of CO2 could even be the highest since 3 million years. There is no shortage of examples of global warming of our planet. Scientists call them hyperthermal events. 56 million years ago, records show that the Earth experienced a significant rise in temperatures. This hyperthermic event was spread over 20,000 years, and the mean temperature of our planet is believed to having increased by about 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. During this thermal maximum, the North Pole temperatures reached a maximum of 27 degrees Celsius and a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius. 5 degrees of temperature rise is a lot, and at the time, according to isotope readings, it took the Earth about 150,000 years to recover. The root cause triggering these temperature increases is not known with certainty. Scientists are leaning towards intense volcanic activity. But beware, there have been quite a few volcanic eruptions since the pre-industrial era, but nothing similar to what is being referred to here. Compared to the volcanoes we know, what could have caused the thermal maximum of 56 million years ago would be rather similar to the Yellowstone volcano in the United States erupting, a caldera of 65 kilometers wide. If the primary trigger is not known, one of the phenomena that accelerated it seems to be determined. This is it, or rather, it's melting. This is permafrost. 56 million years ago, a first warming could have melted the permafrost, releasing gigantic quantities of methane and causing a temperature runaway. To give you an idea of the upheavals life on Earth experienced, geological excavations show that there could have been alligators in the Arctic, palm trees in Antarctica, and a large-scale mangrove around the Arctic Ocean, which nowadays we can only find in tropical regions. During this period, fossils and atomic records show that the Earth could have experienced massive extinctions. These frozen soils are also widespread nowadays, and they are already melting, at the same pace the Arctic and Antarctic ice caps melt. According to simulations, the permafrost could melt completely by the end of the 21st century. The problem is, it is estimated to contain up to twice as much greenhouse gases as the entire Earth atmosphere already contains. The latest stimulations which reproduce heat absorption by greenhouse gases succeed in reproducing the temperature increases observed since 1900. These same simulations, projected on the future, are rather pessimistic for the future of our planet. If we do not stop our emissions, or worse, if we increase them, the temperature rise could exceed 4 degrees Celsius a real climatic bomb. Time is running out for us, but it is not totally lost yet. There is still hope.